YouTube. Well, today is a bit of a different video. Um, inspired by Rebecca Salsa, you should look at her channel, the Uke with the Zook. Uh, charming young lady. She asked me uh, about one of my lighters that I've mentioned, and I, I did say in one of my videos I've got a collection of different lighters as one tends to be as a pipe smoker you collect pipes you collect tampers you collect pipe racks and you collect probably lighters so um, over the years also before when I used to smoke cigars um, this before you is most of the collection um, there's a few in another location but I think the diversity of what I have is here not so huge really, but uh, I thought I'd like to show them to you, so where shall we start? Well, let's start at the bottom here with this this lighter. This, uh, again, I, I've been through eBay looking at antique shops and old lighters, and this basically is one from we estimate the 1920s 1930s something around that it might be a little bit older now i filled them all up so they should all should uh, should work and this one does work a treat every time it's um basically a brass insert here a little bit stiff but there we are and you fill it up from that side and it's very compact and um, very handy for a waistcoat pocket or uh, I don't take it out so often this is a tortoiseshell coating on it it might be from the age when it's synthetic uh, but otherwise it's all brass very nice attractive lighter I think so Sometimes when I'm dressed up in a dinner jacket and something, I'll take this as a, as a novelty. It's uh, certainly enough fuel for an evening. Another one I got off of uh, YouTube was, um, this was all the rage in the 60s and the 50s. Uh, companies would uh, do them as giveaways because smoking was still very prevalent then. It was a practical gift. So... Uh, Again, this is uh, flint and wick standard. Works very well. It might puff a bit because um, I spilled a little bit around the uh, nozzle when I was filling it. But very practical. And my personal opinion is I've learned that the, uh, the flint wheel is the most reliable uh, the electronic lighters are great at the beginning, but quite often they pack up pretty quickly. Now this one is interesting, and I find that with lighters fascinating, because there, sometimes you find quite novel designs. This has a little canister here to replenish the cotton wool chamber. That's the spring plunger, which... Uh, pushes the flint in so you fill this chamber up here and it leaks through a couple of slits into the cotton wick here so it's a sort of slow feed and basically this chamber stops you losing by evaporation the, the fuel so maybe this lighter would sort of hold the fuel for, for a week rather than a couple of three days which many of the regular lighters uh, are prone to Interesting is this little screw here where, where there's a place to put an extra flint and several of the lighters I have give you that capability to put an extra flint in there. Very nice. Huh? Now, some of you will have seen this one. This is an Imco lighter and um, Imco was a company in Austria which for years and years back to the wartime before made these sort of simple working men's lighters. Uh, it's since been taken over by a Japanese company who makes them in China, of course. But 
actually the new ones are still pretty good and look in design almost identical. What was interesting about this uh, lighter is, uh, is this wick and this acts as a um, the inner can canister acts as a kind of candle so you can actually light this and use this as a sort of candle So you see, so if you go camping or something like that, you've got a little kind of uh, candle you can use as well, which is kind of practical. And this Imco is very similar. Uh, there's two or three designs of different types. Um, this is maybe the more common one you see. The other one was called a slimline model. Why this is now not... There we go. I just filled them up. Works the same way and again you have this uh, candle concept here. And these are actually pretty pretty robust. Um, the only thing is I find the uh, you know two or three days and the the fuel has sort of tended to have evaporated because the seals are a bit limited. So these were designed for people who uh, use them every day and fill them up every evening, you know. Then we've got the, uh, the bicycle bell lighter. I've shown that in one of my videos. This was uh, a design also back from the 30s, but a company called Wei, which I think is Chinese, makes them now and you can get them new on YouTube. And you, the trick is you flick this like this. Um, there we go. And it lights as as the catch uh, retracts. So it's uh, all in one motion. You don't have to sort of open it and then light it. There we go. Very nice, uh, novel, novel kind of concept there. Talking of novel concepts, again, this lighter is uh, one of my pride and joys from the 40s, um, called a BT lighter, and you've seen this in probably my video and several others. Um, I even have the box, and I even have inside the receipt for when this was, uh, bought so someone had put it in a cupboard and it sat there for a very long time so you flip this up and light it in a conventional way there you go and the trick is with this uh, it's got a pipe system which bleeds the fuel and turns it into a flamethrower as it were which is perfect for lighting pipes you see which I think is genius. I mean, whoever worked that out, how to weave the copper pipe in there, that exactly that would happen. Very simple, but genial because it's simple. Now, my dear Rebecca Salsa, you asked me about my musical watch. I shall just turn this uh, spring classical music off here for a second so that you can listen and here it is a Japanese watch I think from the early 60s from the uh, Corti company called it's called the Royal Musical you see there's a little music box inside <laughs> Oh, I love it. Imagine that if a lady holds a cigarette out to be lit and you're the one with this who... <laughs> I don't know if it would have the right uh, impression. <laughs> it certainly would amuse her. Lovely, and you just wind it up. 
This one has a, a screw seal that helps to keep the fuel a bit lighter and it also has a reserve flint under that screw so it's it's a nice lighter Japanese make today very very good lighters and they they did uh, back then you know in this sort of uh, small scale engineering they were they were very skilled and uh, I, I just love that one uh, I don't know if anyone can uh, recognize the song. Um, I'd have to look it up, but I'm sure, I think it's a popular song from the, the uh, 60s from that time. Well, I've got a couple from the uh, cigar age here. The Zeno is a sub-brand of Davidoff, and I just love the look of this. And it's one of those jet flame ones, which I don't use for a pipe, of course, but for a cigar, this is very nice uh, attractive gas lighter and uh, this is Bond James Bond 007 Spectra very nice from ST Dupont and it's a jet flame lighter again for cigars or cigarettes the lady might be more impressed when you take that out of your waistcoat of your dinner jacket to light her cigarette, probably. Then we've got uh, a nice one from Sarome. Uh, Sarome is a well-known Japanese company which makes lighters and this is beautifully made silver, silver plated. And with this lovely inlay here, I actually got for, for my wife, but she said, oh, she doesn't like to carry expensive lighters in case she she might lose them but um it's very good very reliable got a slightly skew flame which is good for for, for pipes and very reliable so far beautiful lighter i love that one well uh everybody's got some of these cheaper ones i won't dwell on too many of those but um this one was nice. Um, there's one I have where you can fold that stem up and, and there's one here with the stem. The only thing is I find they are rather, see now it's going, there we go. The electronic lighters get unreliable pretty quickly. Um, you know, and then you end up clicking them like 50 times. This one worked first time. And this is one that has a little tamper in it, which is very handy and they're inexpensive and refillable, which is good as long as they're working, you know. But I, I, it's like every second one I have misbehaves and after a, a year or two I have to throw it away. On that same line of the inexpensive ones, this uh, little cricket one I like because of the case. So it's got a mini cricket here in, inside. Just a regular, these are actually much harder to find than Bix. So it took me a while to find someone online and I bought a pack of 20 of those. But let's uh, credit where the credits do. Like with Bix, they're very reliable and uh, last quite a while before you throw them away they're not refillable and i just love this little metal case around it so that's a sort of good knock around one to put in your jeans pocket and take with you very good and the last of the less expensive ones is this one and sometimes you you find ones which are just extraordinarily reliable after this there's the jet there's the soft flame, gas filled, so it's two options. I must have had this for seven or eight years. It's still going, so, you know, if, you, if you're lucky and get a good one, refillable, they go forever. So, you know, and this is, again, sort of your good old knock around one that you, if you lost it or damaged it, you know, so what, but uh, so far, I've still got it, great. 
So we come to the corner of the Corona lookalikes, the old boys. Uh, this one you've seen often, all of these you've seen often because I like to use these. Uh, that's a St. Claude version, which is about 40 francs or something like that, not expensive. So far behaving with a little tamper attached to it here, but then you've got less gas, um, gas capacity. So it's a trade-off, but quite nice for the money, you know. Then we've got the Caribbe, which has this little hook here, which I love. Makes it very easy to flip off like that. That's almost my favorite, I would say. Japanese, and I'll bet you they are the makers of this one, look. Apart from that, what's the difference, you know? Very, very similar. And this is the Peterson version, which was the most expensive, maybe it's like 70, 80 dollars, something like that. I think I got it on a special deal. But um, especially these two, very, very reliable. Sometimes my St. Claude model does a flamethrower on me and, and uh, suddenly the flame grows all on its own, I don't know why. I need to clean it up I think, probably the, the nozzles. So that's that corner and then of course we come to the legendary Zippos. You can't have enough Zippos. Um, this is a Beretta silver model, solid silver, beautiful. And this is a Thunderbird insert. I got the electronic one there. As I said, maybe it's better to get the flint ones, but uh, so far this one's behaved very nice for pipes. I usually put that in my pipe wrap. And uh, if I'm going somewhere posh, I will take that one with me. But I have one or two alternatives. Talking of posh, there's the gold plated one here from Zippo, beautiful. Got that from a company in America that had it uh, marked down a little bit. And it had a brass insert, uh, well actually gold plated insert, which seems to fit very well because um, I fueled this maybe at least 10 days ago and it's still holding the fuel. This one seems to keep the fuel much better than most of my other Zippos, which is why I generally put the gas Thunderbird insert inside rather than just keeping the regular fuel one. This one, because it was uh, the same color, probably is gold plated or brass, um, and the seal is so nice, it fits beautiful. That's also one for special occasions. That's actually a limited edition, did you see? That's uh, 5,426, I think year 2000 it was made and then i've got my armor the armor model marked with a, an a here so this is 2019 and that uh, a here means it's deep cut and the case is thicker than the normal zippo case and this is a brass case with this lovely cross on it beautiful again with an electronic thunderbird insert Beautiful. They cost a little bit more, these armor models, but I, I like with the deep, deep engraving, you know, very nice. This was the first Zippo I ever had. This was, uh, bought this in the States many years ago. That's more equipped for cigars at the moment, or cigarettes. Very nice. And last real Zippo is this Dragon Zippo which is uh, just a regular case and this plate has been put on and there's the dragon's teeth very attractive I think very clever and because they're so nicely engineered Zippos you can do that you know and it'll fit again with the electronic Thunderbird insert which I use quite often as well and another one that you've seen already, the Federation 
It's a copy, of course, it's not real Zippo. Often these more novelty type ones are from a company called uh, Star, and that's most certainly from China. But actually it's behaved very well. You feel it in the, in the, the latch, it's not, you don't get that cling and clang that you get beautifully with Zippos, but it's been good so far. And I put one of these flint inserts in, that works fine. So that, that was nice uh, to add to my complete st set of Star Trek stuff. <laughs> right. Well, almost forgot. Uh, I did use a match out of here, and this is uh, not a lighter, but uh, a nice little match pouch, if you like, with uh, the striker here, and a good set that just about a box fits in there. Stops it getting crushed and uh, keeps them nice and dry. So that's just a, another novelty to add to my collection. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed looking at all of those. Uh, I'll have to do an update sometime on my Tampers, which has also been a growing collection. Anyway. Everyone take care out there, hope you're all well, and we'll see you soon at my next video, which will be a Yabo video. See you soon, take care everyone, bye bye.